Hey guys, it's Summer Rain from Homestead, Brooklyn, and I'm here in Utrecht, Netherlands at the University of Utrecht's Botanic Gardens. Now they're really known for their collection of bromeliaceae. That includes telangia, like the air plants, and bromeliads. And it's also in part to one man, Eric Hauda. He's a master behind the bromeliaceae, and he's here to take us on a tour of his telangia collection. So welcome to this week's episode of Plant Went On Me, Field Trip Edition. When Rao was a, a botanist in, in, in Germany, he was very famous because he wrote some books about bromeliaceae and uh, he described many, many new species. And he described uh, a few species which are all hybrids, natural hybrids. Wow. And they are all hybrids from Atlantia Argentina. This is Atlantia Argentina. Oh wow, Argentina. Well, look at that one, that is stunning. Yeah, and this is another form. It's the same species, wow. other form. And uh, he described, I think, about three new species which are just hybrids from Argentina. Now, this, as a form of this, do they have to do DNA analysis in order to understand that? Or that, that, that it's more of a form versus like another help, species? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I conclude this because uh, of the inflorescence. They don't develop flowers, so there's something wrong with it. Yeah. And that is, uh, for this species, the same. And, um, for example, um, I find this one. This is Albertian, it's also for Argentina. And this is a natural hybrid between the three. And this, this is uh, called Tulancia Dorothea. It's also described by Rao. It's a, a hybrid between Argentina, so this one and this one and this one. But it has its own species name, so I'm a little it bit confused. It has a species name, It yeah. has a species name, but yeah. you know it's a hybrid. So typically yeah. now, if it was a considered a hybrid, wouldn't it be considered this times that? Yeah, okay. but it will keep the name. Okay. It will only get a cross before the epithet. I see. Okay. And the natural hybrids will, will be, are considered more or less like species, okay. the same way in naming. But uh, of course, it's good to know that it are hybrids. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's, uh, when, when it's like this one, it has a red label. Mm -hmm. It means it's a clonotype, mm -hmm. which means that uh, the name the publication of the name was from this plant. So we got a piece of it, and then uh, we know it's, uh, it's from the same plant. So uh, this plant is more valuable than all other plants because uh, it, the name is based on this one. I would imagine that if it was grown from seed, it would take a lot longer. Yeah, yeah. yeah some grow very well. Uh, they they pop a lot, so you can spread them around, uh, around easily, but some only develop one shoot and uh, you can't propagate them. So it depends on the species. How does the, how does the actual seedling look as it's growing from seed? Because I've never seen... It starts like um, uh, one very tiny leaf, uh, a, a succulent tiny leaf, and after a year you get the second leaf. So it splits up like, uh, like this, mm -hmm. and then more leaves develop, and it starts growing in one plane. And then do you have it in soil or how, how do you No, grow no, it? it's on, on a, a shadow wire. Shadow wire, okay. Yeah, yeah. shadow wow. cloth, yeah. Wow. That's how I grow, like, oh no, that's plastic. Yeah, yeah, like a yeah. shade cloth. Yeah, I know yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah. That's great, yeah. For example, this one, I collected this one in... Uh, wow. This yeah. is like from Dr. Seuss. It's, it's so wacky. Beautiful, beautiful eh? Yeah. So but beautiful. this is from Ecuador, from a, from a desert. It was growing in a very windy desert. There was one legume a brush growing there. And in between on the ground, this, this plants were sending. And there was so much wind that the seed pots were blown apart and the seeds were still on the, on the inflorescence. And they were, in, because of the wind, in one direction. It looks very spooky. <gasps> beautiful. It's such a beautiful plant. Yeah. And look at all the scallops. Yeah, it's like... Yeah, we call this catafils, the, yeah, the, the brack likes. Uh, uh, leaves on, on the stolones. Over here you see the, the very small species. They call this, this group Diophrantema, this uh, subgenus. And most of those species are from um, Bolivia, uh, Argentina, um, and Peru. And growing on craggy, 
cliffs or slopes or not really? Are no, they growing on plants? They grow on, 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 uh, on steep walls just on, on, uh, and some will grow epiphytical. For example, this one, it looks more like moss. And we have an even smaller one, which is called Brioides, and, and Brium is moss. Moss, like it's bryophytes, moss, yeah. 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 bryophytes. So it's really called after moss, but now it has got a new name because the name um, uh, Brio, um, this one, yeah, like Trigoletus. There was, the name was actually Trigoletus, so they had to, uh, it's now called Minutiflora mm. because of mi minute flo flowers. Where do you have to keep up with all of the scientific names? Is it just in the literature? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm building your own, uh, your, your own database system. I have a, a system where I put all the new descriptions and uh, it's also public. You can see it on the internet, uh, I have all the descriptions of every, when a species is described today, it will be on, online tomorrow. Wow, fascinating. It's an encyclopedia of bromeliads, and mm -hmm. uh, I try to get as many pictures and things in. Uh, Good on you. And literature. This one's beautiful too, like just the, the snow white. Yeah, this is uh, close to Tlantia oh, Okay, and this it's, is Molus. Yeah, it's, uh, oh, you can see the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're all yeah. stuck to the edges. Yeah, they just grow on the, on the wire, yeah. But you can see it's it's not that long as a new edis, but mm -hmm. it, it's it's uh, it's elongating, yep. elongating stems, mm -hmm. and the flowers are the same as as You mm -hmm. see, it's uh, this one are olive green. As new has more brighter green, but uh, this is species is growing on rock also. It's mm -hmm. just on a steep wall. It's from uh, from Argentina. It's uh, recently described. It's not that long uh, ago that it was described. So they're still finding new species. And over here you see how they spread around the oh, seeds. Yeah, of course, the, by wind in the night, yeah. say that's wind blown. Yeah. yeah, they're very tiny seeds with a, a long coma and they can fly easily on, on the on wind. They, these ones are not really open yet, but uh, when you let them fly, you can see they, uh, yeah. they fly easily. Yeah. These are more the, the terrestrial species. Mm -hmm. So like this one, dikeas and... Uh, yeah, some dikeas, I have some dikeas at home. I always have to watch what I'm touching because sometimes they're a little bit prickier, more prickier than cacti. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, some, some are very pricky, yeah. For example, these ones, they're growing crevices following the rocks and they have very long needles on them. It looks like most you can sit on it, but uh, yeah, you yeah. will regret when you do so. Yeah, uh, they are very sharp. Very yeah, very sharp needles. Yeah, that is very, very sharp. Yeah. But beautiful. They, uh, they are especially beautiful when you see them in the nature, following the crevices of, in the rock. It's, mm. uh, it's really great. They are from Bolivia. Deuteroconia. Yeah. Deuteroconia brevifolia. Yeah. That's gorgeous. Yeah, I think it was it was um, Abdomachella. Yeah. The the genus, but they put it in Deuteroconia based on the flowers. But I think the trochnia, they have perennial inflorescences, so they stay on for, for many years, mm. which is not the case in this group. So I think still, I hope the molecular work will prove that it's, it's good, a good genus right. on its own. I, I like it better as separated because uh, yeah. the inflorescence is total, totally different. Yeah. The flowers look much the same, that's true. Yeah. This is a, a clonotype from a bromelia. So this is the Thai genus for the family, this genus, uh, the genus bromelia. And uh, because of this red dot, you can see it's a type. Mm -hmm. So this is from uh, Venezuela. It's a very succulent uh, bromelia, beautiful one, really forming beautiful. like yeah. beautiful stolones. And the stolones, yeah, down yeah. here. They can send the, the pups more than a meter away. Wow, that is yeah. pretty impressive. Yeah. But they are very nasty to grow. They grow quite fast. Yeah. So from seed, a plant like this is maybe two, three years. Wow, yeah, that so is that, pretty that, impressive. That is better than Talantias. Yeah. grows much better. Way better, way better. Yeah. For example, this one is a Deutococnia uh, longipetala. It's from Balsas, uh, Peru. I collected it myself, I see it. And this, um, 
it's the same species as this one. Mm. Uh, this one is very green, and this one is very White. silvery. Yeah. This is really a desert area, and uh, they grow in the mountains, and uh, you, you find uh, thousands of plants together. Mm. I was standing in, in between the plants <laughs> while my wife was taking pictures. That's beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful species. I'm hoping you're wearing long stockings when you're there. Cause <laughs> yeah, you have, tear, you have to. Tear apart have, your leg. Yeah, yeah. It's important, yeah. Oh, look at this one. This one's quite robust in the inflorescence yeah. department. This is one of the forms of uh, Talansi ionanta. Ionanta is a very uh, well known species because it's a lot in, in cultivation, yes. like this one. Co most common and probably the easiest for it to flower, I think, in the home. Yeah. But I think this deserves to be a, a species on its own. It's, it's a species that grows on rock. Tlansi uh, ionanta is, is growing epiphytical. Oh, that's fascinating. So you think that this could be its own species? I think this yeah. needs to be a species on its own. And in, interesting, it doesn't like to, uh, to connect the roots to the cork. Hmm. When you have it, uh, I have it in my, in my house near the wall, and the roots go to the wall and, and connect to the wall, not to the cork. That's it's so on. fascinating. Yeah. And then this one with the yellow inflorescence, that's stunning. I haven't seen too many yellow flowers. No, that's uh, quite uh, strange yellow flowers. Um, this is also a species from Mexico. And uh, you see that there's also a lot of variation. In it. Normally they are glabrous and have red bracts. And this one doesn't color much and has long, uh, big trigomes on the, on the uh, bracts. But this, this is the typical uh, syndrome for uh, pollinating by, uh, by hummingbirds. Hummingbirds, yeah. Yellow, orange, red, I would imagine, and tubular. Yeah, the color combination uh, of, of red and, uh, and blue. And then these are usually like a purplish blue flower that comes out of here? Yeah, mostly those species have the tubular blue flowers. Yeah. This is also interesting when you see forms like this. This is Tlansi elasiana. It's not described that much long ago. It's, uh, it has those bulbous um, rosettes and uh, they are inhabited by ants. Ah, so anything that is bulbous usually probably has some ant affiliation yeah. then. Yeah. In Tlansi it is. And uh, we have some ants here and uh, in, when you open up the leaves, mm -hmm. mostly you'll find the ants. You see them? Oh yeah, look at that. Unbelievable. So do the ants provide protection from other insects? Because they're not usually fed upon. So is there some kind of commensalism there or no? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Well, how do, how For do example, they... the ants, they, they grow lice on okay. other plants, but not on this one. Okay. So, so is there some benefit for this plant then? Yeah, uh, the ants take in uh, all kinds of uh, nutrients, nutrients into, in, into okay. the leaves and there okay. are also the trigomes inside of the leaf sheets. They can absorb uh, uh, nutrients. So, so that's something to, the the, the I would say then you growing without ants then you'd probably see a less healthier plant or you'd be having to augment with nutrients in a different kind of way without the ants. Maybe they, they, they don't get the nutrients, but at least they, go, they, they get the protection. Yeah, that's true. So that's, <laughs> that's, I think that's the, more, the better benefit for the plant than the nutrients. Even when, uh, 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 for example, uh, a climber will enter the plant and fix the plant, they will cut up loose. Mm. They get rid of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they really protect the plant because that's their that's home. I didn't really know that about bulbous plants, but that totally makes sense. Yeah. Especially when you see ant plants and you have that big caudiciform on the bottom and then this obviously makes sense. This one is really spectacular in flowering. There's yeah, that like many the uh, blue color. tubular flowers together. Yeah. So it was really beautiful. And now all, all of these are going to be dying back and they'll be shooting out more pups. Yeah, but they will stay on for at least uh, two years. Oh, wow. Yeah, they, they don't die back uh, directly. So they start uh, growing shoots and the shoots will develop much faster than a seedling can. Of course, it will get all the nutrients from the, the parent and at last it will suck uh, all the nutrients from the plant and the, the mother plant will die. So then do you advise people to just to kind of leave the pup on? Yeah, it's better. Okay. Yeah. 
When you like to propagate it, you can, for example, this pup is, already, is from this one, mm -hmm. is already three quarters of the size of, of the mother plant. You can get it away, and it will produce a new one. Mm. So when you want to have more pups, that's the way to do it. So this one will produce a new one, or this one will produce a new one? No, this, this is already a pup of this one. Yes. So when you remove it, it will certainly uh, produce a new yeah. one. So that's a good way to propagate. This one, I've just started to see something similar to this in plant stores. I'm not sure that this kind of similar structure of this like Of course, yeah, is. yeah. This is not very common. Uh, this, uh, this one is uh, very special. Uh, this is from Venezuela. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a form of uh, Talansia funkiana. And I checked the type. I think the type is like this, mm -hmm. but uh, the more common funkians look green and uh, they look more green and the leaves are more erect. So I thought this was a new variety but I checked the type and the type is like this. So probably this is the real uh, type yeah. variety. And the other one has to, to get another name or a variety name. And this is, the other ones are, uh, are much easier growing. This is, can be very long. Mm -hmm. It's a very uh, uh, big form and it doesn't uh, flower very well. The other one can flower in all, all, and in this one you get only one flower in one of the the shoots. And are you, are you, is this gl glued onto there or yeah. how does this work? Yeah, this okay. is glued, yeah. Okay. They, they mount it with uh, copper wire, mm -hmm. which is isolated of course because it must not oxidate. That's poisonous. Uh, but besides uh, connected it with the wire, they use glue, otherwise it get room and it will fall off. And then this one's kind of interesting too. It has, it's growing straight out as opposed to this you know does this eventually open up or does it like a horn no it, it stays this way wow. yeah yeah it's beautiful yeah it's again it has this uh, gold like structure so yeah. it, uh, it will inhabit ha ants normally and uh, this is probably extinct in the wild really? it's from one of the the, the, the islands in the, in the caribbean and uh, it's probably extinct wow and, and th this, this is grown from seedling we are happy we have it in culture, and, uh, we, but it's not ver very easy to grow. It's a quite difficult species. The growing in this kind of manner, is, as opposed to like this manner, does this say something about where it's grown or how it's Yeah, grown? probably it does, but I don't know what. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Fascinating. You have some species, like Saladiana, they can grow this size of bulbs, and they do the same. They make like a, a horn of a cow. Beautiful, yeah. very stout, Stunning. yeah, beautiful, beautiful forms. These are the bigger puyas. <coughs> it's from uh, high up in the Andes. You don't see see this, these species much because um, they are not that easy to grow because they become too big and uh, you have. To, they don't grow very well in pots. In in the other greenhouse, we have them in the full ground. Right. And they grow much bigger and, uh, and flowering, and uh, then they flower every year. But in pot, it's very difficult to, to grow flowers in them. This one is quite interesting too, because it has not only these edges, but it has all this cat, like cattail tail style fluff. Yeah, this looks like a talansia, and it's very interesting. It looks like talansia durati, and where this grows in in Bolivia, the talansia durati is growing in between this oh, on the wow. rock. So you see this one and talansia durati, they look like the same form, and they are totally different subfamily. Unbelievable. Yeah, this is a Puya, Puya laxa. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, Talansia is a totally different, uh, Talansioide are different well, they're subfamily. Just, I guess they're developing the same type of physiology because of where they grow. You yeah, know, probably so, they yeah. do, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And normally the Talansia do that, they, they send out the leaves and they curve, mm -hmm. so they can grab mm -hmm. branches, so that's the way they walk through the through the trees. And this one in, in the, in, on the rock, it puts down the leaves on the ground and it curls only once. And it's like they are Underneath standing the on it, yeah, like yeah. legs, they yeah. use it like legs. Wow, yeah, unbelievable. And what are those like fleshy ones down over there? Is it also Talangia? No, no. no. It could be, it could be, so but it's, yeah, yeah. This is, uh, this was Frisia, but now it's called Veraulia. It's a group from Frisia which is uh, uh, separated and uh, they have mostly night flowering uh, inflorescences. 
and are bed pollinated mostly and uh, the flowers turn to one direction mm. so they've, they've, and they have a lot of uh, pollen and uh, so it's a typical bed flower mm. and but from the plant you can see whether it's a talantia or it's a freesia or it's yeah. a rare you can see yeah because they are close but you have to so you really do have to wait for the inflorescence yeah. in order to be able yeah. to understand Need the inflorescence okay. This one is from, um, it's also better growing. In, it looks like one you put on cork, but it, it doesn't want to grow on cork. Mm. This is a new species. It's not yet, it's at spe spec, but yeah. it's, a, it's a, a species close to Floribunda, but it's much bigger. Mm. And uh, it's the, the publications are already submitted, but not, uh, oh, not nice. yet published. <laughs> so it will be maybe published within a, a month or so. And it's called uh, Pseudofloribunda, which will say it looks like Floribunda. And now these look like they have a coppery tone to them. Yeah. Is that, or is that just older leaves? No, no, no. It's the color of the trigomes. Okay. So the trigomes can be brownish, what they call ferruginous, rus so, rusty. So it has like this ferrous, ferrous, yeah. you know, meaning iron Like, rus like yeah. rusty, yeah. Mm -hmm. and they, and you see at the base they are brownish and then over here they become greener, uh, whitish, sagey, yeah. Sage yeah. Color, silvery, yeah. silvery, yeah. So it's just the color of the, of the, of the trigomes, mm -hmm. which can have a very neat effect on the plants, mm -hmm. yeah. This is a very strange one. Okay. It will, this one will die. Okay. It will pr try to produce as many seeds as possible, but you see they are not pollinated. Yeah. And then it will start giving new infrast uh, new spikes. Mm -hmm. But uh, you have a species in uh, in Peru which has uh, uh, the, the normal uh, distichus uh, spikes, so mm -hmm. in two the, the flowers in two rows, and this one has the, the flowers in a spirally. spiral, yeah, yeah. Like world, yeah, yeah, which is very strange in in, in Talantia. Yeah. Only the Tainifolia group has, but th this is because of a reduction of the inflorescence, has uh, the flowers in a spiral. But this is the only one which has a compound inflorescence with spiral leaf, mm. spi spiral uh, flowers. But it will go on flowering because it, uh, it has enough str strength, but it will not grow up. up. Mm. Wow, it, c it can grow grass shoots, what they call grass shoots. Mm. They look very grassy uh, at the base and they are isolated from the mother plant, plant in an early stage mm. and they grow like seedlings, they grow very slowly. Unbelievable. So that is, you can see it over here. Yeah, I see them, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So these are the grass shoots. They are already, indi already independent from the mother plant. And so uh, you could uh, technically remove them then? Yeah, you can yeah. remove them and grow them. Uh, and uh, so this is to assure that uh, the place they found they did well, mm -hmm. that, that will be kept occupied by this, uh, this species. So it's a way, otherwise they have to, uh, to keep uh, enough energy for the pup. And in this strategy, they can produce as many seeds as they, they can. Mm -hmm. And uh, spread. it's just another strategy. This is also one from the, from the rocks from, uh, from Peru. Yeah, I mean, it's barely growing in anything right here. So it's got this little tiny pot. Yeah. yeah. But it's really fixed. It's yeah. uh, it's really uh, really rooted. Yeah, you can yeah, you can yeah, get yeah. it out. Wow. It's uh, fixed to the pot too. Yeah. yeah. This is beautiful. Right? Look look gorgeous. like this one. This one gives pups that are really silvery. Mm -hmm. This one is starting to 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 become more gray, and it's going to look more grayish and less beautiful. I found this one in Ecuador. I just found a seedling. It was a beautiful talantia, really beautiful. But I didn't know it was this big one <laughs> because this will grow up this size oh before it goodness. starts flowering. Oh my goodness. Yeah. This is um, what they call uh, monocarpic. It's uh -huh. only flowers once and then it dies. It is producing in young stage already from this size. It's are producing the grass shoots. But these grass shoots are not looking like grass. Oh, no, yeah, exactly. So they are grass shoots. Okay. That's yeah, they are grass shoots. Yeah. And they are already independent. You can just yeah. pull them off. Wow. And you can see the base is already dyed. Yeah. So they are really independent. And when they are bigger, they don't produce grass shoots anymore. Mm. So they only do it in a young stage. And after that, 
is the, when, when it starts flowering, they can grow, grow grass shoots anymore. Over here you see the grass shoots are already much larger, yeah, huge. but they are already, for many years, they are already independent for yeah. many years. But they just keep growing. And you see they look totally different as the mother plant. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. It's, it's a, a beautiful way of, uh, because these plants are collected by Rao many, many years ago in, in Ecuador, in Peru. And uh, because of the, those grass shoots, they are still in cultivation. Because I have many here, I can, mm -hmm. can spread them spread around. Them around yeah. And uh, that's why these plants are in, in cultivation mm -hmm. still. Otherwise they are, were yeah. finished already. Yeah for a long time. Yeah, I would imagine that you have some that are on kind of the endangered species list that maybe no longer are endemic to their area or native to their area. Yeah, like the one I told you there. Yeah. They don't find it in the... In the in wow. Another example is uh, what was Ratsinia diagriana, a form of Talantia, but this group has been moved to Ratsinia. Uh, this is from the mangroves in, in Ecuador. Mm. It's a beautiful uh, bulbous uh, plant with bright uh, uh, green leaves with uh, dark brown spots on it, it's beautiful. And a uh, curving inflorescence with uh, beautiful red bracts. Mm. It's in cultivation, you find it here in the shops, mm. but it's extinct in Ecuador. It's from the mangroves, but the mangroves, a lot of those mangrove trees are, are moved, are removed, and uh, the, the plant got extinct. This, it isn't found for many years mm. now. And Ecuador, yeah. It's easy to travel there, so it yeah. should be found. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for this, because I've learned way more about Talangia than I had projected. Um, one, because you, typically when I see them in stores, of course, they just say Talangia. So it's really fascinating to be able to see all the, the different species and to learn also about the grass shoots, because I had never even heard of something of that nature. But how I always hear, yes, they flower once, and then they produce pups. But in that case, they stop producing when they produce a flower. Yeah. So, unbelievable. Well, thank you so much yeah, for your welcome, time. Yeah. I really appreciate this. <laughs> hey guys, so hopefully you enjoyed that tour of the University of Utrecht's Botanic Gardens. And of course, if you like these episodes, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and follow along on my Instagram at homesteadbrooklyn and on my website at homesteadbrooklyn.com. Later.